So since the Photon Ultra was released, I've been trying to tell people why DLP is better than LCD when it comes to 3D prints. And for miniature wargamers specifically, the new D2 is my preferred choice over the Ultra and even the Sonic Mini 8K. And by making a statement like that, you can probably understand why it's been an uphill climb. So here's an immediate pop quiz. One of these Prime models was printed on the D2 and the other was printed on the Mini 8K. Let me know which you think is the D2 down in the comments and I'll come back later with the answer. Now, based on some feedback to my previous videos, unless I'm an expert on a particular subject, I shouldn't even be making them. But my position in this industry is one of a geek hobbyist, just someone who loves to print and paint cool miniatures. You know, like most people watching this video. Is it not enough to explain a product in relative terms? After all, my out-of-box hands-on experience would surely be similar to most hobbyists. But instead of talking through specs and numbers and how specialist technologies work, I'm here to show you simply the practical results you can get from a DLP printer and why this is better than this. So with that, let me say hi. I'm Ross and welcome to Fohammer Videos. Let me tell you first that these two models here were printed on different printers but raw printer settings, meaning no anti-aliasing has been applied to either one, but to get a smooth print, they both need some. I want to get all the negatives about the D2 out of the way, so let me go into those first. Anycubic are still putting the USB port on the sides of their machines. So Anycubic, if you're watching this, on behalf of the 3D printing community, pack it in now, just put the ports on the front. But that's everything I found wrong with this printer. Now, comparing the technology of DLP to LCD is like comparing apples to oranges. They are both similar in shape and essentially do the same thing, but each in different ways leading to a different result. And with this printer being a direct upgrade to the Photon Ultra, you can always check out our video on that printer to get a solid point of reference on how this new model improves on greatness. Many components, such as the VAT and control screen, are identical to the previous version, and as such, I literally ported my exposure settings over from the Ultra and printed without much issue. Though, after a few prints, I did increase exposure time from the Ultra's 1.6 seconds per layer to 1.8 seconds per layer due to efficiencies that have been made with the power of the projector. The D2 unit is larger than the Ultra, and this is to house the mechanics of the new projector and its new projected light area, which doubles the resolution over the previous model, so now you get 2K 2560x1440 in place of the 1280x720 of the Ultra. And instead of doubling the print area, this has seen a 55% increase as the screen has been upgraded from 4.6 to 5.9 inches. For those unaware, this screen size change improves the quality of prints from the D2 over the Ultra, because you now have more pixels in a relatively smaller area. So, the individual pixels that make up a layer are smaller, now only 51 microns versus the 80 microns of the Ultra. You see, 2K, 4K, 8K mean nothing without knowing the screen size of a particular printer. It's the size of the pixels that matter. Many of you watching this who have some experience in resin printing are probably wondering why should we care about a new 2K printer with 52 micron pixels when we have small 8K printers with 22 micron pixels? One word, accuracy. That's why. Take a home projector and walk it closer to the wall. You'll see that you have the same number of pixels projected, but now in a smaller area. As you get closer, the image overall generally gets sharper, to a point. But you'll also see there's no light cast. Look at the edge of your TV and the edge of a projected screen. The TV tends to send light out into your room. The projector has a clear separation between screen and wall. And that's the benefit of a DLP printer over LCD. Due to how direct the projected light is, you get a much more accurate and sharper print. So where the edge of a print is projected, you'll see it accurately on the model. Due to the 52 micron pixel size, this pixel is visible on each layer, and as the layers build up, this can become a very obvious voxel. So why am I saying this is a good thing? Well, I went through a few tests with this printer, printing a model from one-page rules over and over at different locations and orientations. And this is where the value of relatable practical tests are a huge improvement over number spouting. You see, I've been told a few untruths about how DLP technology works that encourage some of these tests. Nobody was being intentionally misleading, we're all just trying to figure it out together. 
First was that the projectors in the Ultra and D2 can actually zoom in and out. So if you have one smaller model on your build plate, the projector can condense its full resolution down to that model's size, decreasing the pixel size below the standard. In my initial tests of this, it appeared correct, and I was then told that the DLP projector will have larger pixels on the outside of the screen than it will have on the inside of the screen. But after several day-long tests, some boring research and further contact with Anycubic, I can report that both of these claims are incorrect, and the initial inference of pixel resolution difference from my earlier tests was due to nothing more than a change in print orientation. So back to the practical benefits of this printer, specifically for printing miniature war games forces, but I will talk about larger prints too. Here it is in simple terms. I've just found 3D printing both far easier and far more detailed on this printer than practically anything else. And it has directly comparable detail to something like the Mini 8K, and it even surpasses the 8K in various ways, depending on how you look at it and what you want. Now, the internet could, and to be fair it does, argue which of these printers gives the best result. Okay, internet? Have at it. But I think the fact that these arguments even exist, where people are scrutinizing macro photography, says enough about the difference to summarize that there simply isn't enough of a difference between them for this to even matter. Which brings us back to the necessity for practical comparisons rather than a raw statement. You can watch both our earlier videos in full, but the TLDR is that the Mini 8K with its proprietary resin provides really smooth results that look incredibly sharp, but for miniatures on that printer, you're often still going to need to enable anti-aliasing to remove voxel lines and apply image blur to remove layer lines. And whilst this is incredibly detailed, you will still naturally get some image bloat from the LCD technology. Minimal, probably imperceivable, but some. For the people actually intending to use those models in war games, in my opinion that resin is far too brittle to transport your models. Heck, I've accidentally broken some parts on these models just by picking them up. While some people will argue the resin's not brittle, it's you, then let me say it a different way. That resin is comparably much more brittle than the DLP Craftsman resin you get here, or resin from other brands. And whilst that printer will take other resins, I've yet to see anyone find a resin that significantly improves the print results over a 4K resin and a 4K printer. So you either get detailed brittle 8K resin, or why bother with 8K in the first place? If you want more detail on your miniatures, then I think the D2 with its DLP Craftsman resin is the best choice. However, as I said before, with the D2 and even the Ultra before it, you will still see a lot of voxelization initially. For miniature painters, this is terrible. These voxels will show up awfully, especially with painting techniques like dry brushing and washers. But this is significantly reduced when you apply anti-aliasing and image blur, but because it's DLP, you don't lose out on the detail. You see, unlike an LCD printer which bloats and softens the details of a model, the D2's accuracy will apply anti-aliasing correctly and blend the voxels together. This smooths out the layers but retains the sharpness of your model's details. Put simply, the result is more accurate to the 3D render. Under severe scrutinization when zoomed in, you will still see layer of voxel lines visible on the D2 prints. But just stick 16x anti-aliasing on with 2x image blur, and you get models that are comparable to the Mini 8K, but with more defined recesses and extremities. So now you have a smooth print, I can say that the DLP Craftsman resin on the D2 is absolutely perfect for printing miniature armies. Not only can it print well at lower temperatures with a slight increase to the exposure time, something that can make other resins even more brittle, but you get incredibly sharp results from a flexible resin which is still firm enough to avoid the warped components you can usually get from softer resins. Yet you can still bend and flex it quite away without it snapping. It also makes support removal a breeze. With or without hot water applied, supports will often just pull away without leaving horrible pop marks on the surface. And yeah, larger parts can still snap if you drop a model from high directly onto a hard surface, but you run equal risk with normal plastic or resin miniatures. For sharpness and functionality, this stuff is spot on. And the beauty of me focusing on printing miniatures is that when it comes to larger prints, due to the scale difference, these layer and voxel lines become less important anyway. For display pieces, there's no visible benefit for reducing layer lines further, but the sharpness of the model stands out far more. 
And all of this comes before you really begin to compare the ease of use and other practical benefits afforded to you by the D2. For example, DLP printers consume a lot less energy than LCD printers. In fact, at only 15 watts, this is 75% less than a similar LCD printer. Whilst 3D printers don't exactly break the bank when it comes to power usage, we are currently heading into an economy and state of finances where every little helps. The printer also dissipates a lot less heat than an LCD printer, which means there's no need for a fan in the unit. When this is on, all you can hear is the rhythmic whir of the Z-axis rod spinning to move the build plate. And as weird as it sounds, I actually find it quite soothing. And to top it off, the projector is rated to last for 20,000 hours, where a typical monochrome LCD is expected to last only 2,000. That's 10 times longer before you need to even consider replacing components, and through experiences I've had, a monochrome LCD can show obvious signs of print degradation long before this. And the D2 also has a scratch-resistant glass window rather than the VAT sitting directly atop an unprotected screen. If you accidentally pierce your FEP, you can easily scrape off any cured resin rather than the likely alternative, having to replace a whole LCD. Again, to the practical side of all these benefits, it costs you less to run, it runs quieter, and unless you run a 3D printing business, you're unlikely to ever need to replace any of the primary components before you decide to upgrade to a new printer. When it comes to the price point of this printer, it has released on par with the Mini 8K, though I expect most companies to battle this out with various sales and offers. And due to this, I know people will want to know which one they should choose between the two. And though the D2 is 3cm narrower in the width and 2.5cm shorter in height, ask yourself honestly, do you really need that difference? Each printer can print a squad of 5-10 to 10 models, and you're hardly likely to build and paint all of these before your next print is finished. And for larger models, most are broken down into smaller components anyway. I've never felt limited by the build size of the D2 like I did on the Ultra. So here's my view for miniatures and even larger models. If you're printing forces of models or a vast array of components to paint to tabletop or pro standard and use them in your war games, my recommendation would be the Photon Ultra D2 any day of the week. If though you only ever intend to display your printed models or want to paint them to competition standard, there is an argument for getting the Mini 8K, because the print results are just that slight bit smoother. But because it's LCD, this smoothness is at the cost of sharpness and recess definition, which I personally feel makes miniatures pop even more. For anything larger than miniatures, I personally don't think the microscopic definition matters unless you intend to only show your models via a microscope or through macro photography. The D2 out of the box is easy to set up, easy to use, and the resin works in various temperatures and gives you a result that has sharp details but has the benefit of being more robust than on equivalent printers. It uses less power, operates quieter, and is generally safer in the case of FEP punctures. I want to finish with a big thanks to you for watching and a huge thanks to my patrons for making content like this possible. If you like the content and it helped you in any way, please check out my other videos on 3D printers. Don't forget to hit like, drop me a comment and subscribe. See you all next time. Fohammer out.